uh, we'll continue our discussion on uh, the first form of market that is um, perfect competition. So, if you remember in the last uh, session, we are discussing about the uh, this kind, this type of market form that is perfect competition, and this is one type of extreme edge compared to the. Uh, monopoly. So, in the last class, we discuss about the different characteristic features of perfect competition and how it makes it a perfect competitive market structure. Then we talked about the demand and uh, revenue of a farm, competitive farm and demand and revenue for the industry. Then we talked about the profit maximizing condition that is two condition, one is necessary condition and second one is sufficient condition. Then uh, taking these two profit maximizing condition, we analyze the short run equilibrium in different situ situation like uh, super normal profit, normal profit and super normal losses. And uh, uh, then we talked about the uh, like uh, the subnormal profit, uh, what generally uh, the firm gets when they are getting into the shutdown operation. We check the shutdown condition in which case generally the firm stops the production get out of the market. And uh, when if you look at the, in a typical uh, market, the manager has to take two decisions either whether to produce or whether to shut down. So, we check the in that context we check the shutdown condition. So, in today's uh, session we will um, uh, start our discussion with the uh, supply market supply and farm supply analysis in the short run. Then we will discuss the long run profit maximization, then we will talk about the long run supply analysis then uh, we'll see how what is the um, uh, what is the imposition of tax generally what is the effect of imposition of tax in the theory of uh, typical in the perfect competitive market and then we'll see whether there is a uh, relevance of this perfect competitive market structure in the real world so to start with uh, with the short run market supply if you remember we just uh, uh, we just stop our discussion on the uh, in the last session on the um, uh, shutdown condition and what is a shutdown condition if the price goes below the minimum of abc generally the firm shut down the operation so that is the starting point to analyze the short run supply function in case of a perfect competitive market structure the perfectly competitive farm produces above the minimum point of AVC because any any level of output below the minimum point of AVC, uh, it brings uh, there is no profit or no loss. Uh, maybe it's not loss in, apart from profit. It's not loss even they're not able to cover the variable cost also, and discontinues the production if price falls short of minimum of AVC. So, from this shutdown condition, there are two conditions emerge. One condition one, if price is less than minimum of ABC, then shutdown. Condition two, if price is greater than or equal to minimum of ABC, then choose any output that would maximize the profit. One is the first case is very clear. If it is less than minimum of ABC, then shutdown. Second one, if it is greater than or equal to uh, minimum ABC, then the firm should go for production, but there again the he, he has to take a call or the manager has to take a call that what is the output level that would maximize the profit. And to get that level of output, again the firm has to go to the profit maximizing condition, taking both the uh, both the first order and second order or it's the so called necessary and sufficient condition to profit maximization. So, short run supply curve for any individual firm can be derived from these two condition that is condition 1 shutdown condition 2 produce the profit maximizing level of output. So, if price is less than minimum of ABC firm would not supply output would be equal to 0. So, any level of price which is less than minimum of ABC firm would not supply. So, obviously, if it is shut down then output would be equal to 0. For such price, supply curve will coincide with the vertical axis because at this price, uh, if the output is zero, the supply curve will coincide with the vertical axis. Whereas for any price above minimum of average variable cost, the firm would choose an output level that would satisfy the condition of profit maximization. So supply curve of the firm would be identical to the short term marginal cost curve above the minimum point of average variable cost and industry supply curve can be obtained by horizontal summation of the supply curve for all the farms in the industry. So, the point here to uh, note that any point in the minimum uh, below the any point any price point below the minimum point of ABC 
there is a shutdown. So, we can start at the starting point for the supply because if the price is at that level then only the output will be produced and the supply will be given to the market. So, that is the starting point and that is why if you look at where ABC is minimum, maybe ABC is minimum at when it is actually the marginal cost curve cuts the ABC at its minimum point. That is the reason we consider the marginal cost of the uh, marginal cost of the firm in the short run is the supply curve, not the entire marginal cost curve, rather the that segment of the marginal cost curve which lies above the minimum point of average variable cost that serves as the short run supply curve in the uh, in the perfect competitive market that is for the firm. And if you do a horizontal summation of all supply curve, all individual supply curve for all competitive firm, then we reach to the market supply curve. Let us see graphically how we reach to the market supply curve. This is our short run average cost curve. This is our average variable cost, short run average variable cost and it is minimum point marginal cost curve will intersect. So, this is the corresponding to this, this is P star, this is our equilibrium price that is P star. So, now how to identify the supply curve? So, P star is the price that is decided on the basis of market price. Any price if it is goes below this P star, P star to double P star, any price if it is goes below that then the market or the uh, sellers they will not uh, supply in the market. And that is the reason if you look at uh, this is the starting point of the supply curve and the segment marginal cost segment which is lies above the minimum point of the uh, uh, average variable cost that becomes the supply curve for the firm. So, the short term supply curve is the that segment of the marginal cost curve which lies ab above the minimum point of average variable cost because uh, if you look at that is the starting point of the supply. If price goes below that generally the uh, generally the uh, supplier they are not supplying the uh, product into the market. Now, we will just take a numerical example to understand in a typically when we take it in the real life case when we have a cost function given when we have a uh, demand function given how to identify what is the shutdown condition or how to find out the price below which the firm generally not supplying any product to the market. So, we will take the market demand curve that is we will take the market demand curve that is D that is equal to 25 minus 0 0.5 P and we will take the supply that is uh, 10 plus 1.0 p. So, if we now and the cost function we will take as 25 minus 2 q plus 4 q square. Now, we need to find out should the firm produce in the short run. and if they are producing in the short run, how much quantity they should produce. Okay. Now, from the demand and supply function, we will try to find out what is the equilibrium price or what is the market clearing price, where the uh, seller and buyer they will uh, sell and buy whatever they would like to interest it. So, the demand curve is 25 minus 0 0.5 p and the supply curve is 10 plus 1.0 p. So, this is typically the demand is equal to supply. If you solve this, then we will get p is equal to 10 and q is equal to 20. So, p is equal to 10 is the equilibrium price and q is equal to 20 is the equilibrium quantity or we can call it market clearing price and market market clearing quantity. 
Now, what is the next task we have to do in order to find out the minimum uh, point, the shutdown point? We need to find out the profit maximizing level of output. And how to find the profit maximizing le level of output? That is again through the profit maximizing condition that is marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and the slope of the MC should be greater than the slope of the marginal revenue curve. So, in the long run if you remember what is the equilibrium condition the long run uh, before going to the long run, long run equilibrium condition is where, where the uh, uh, long run average cost curve should be equal to the P which is equal to go MC. Taking the same thing in the short run because if you look at MC is equal to MR, MR is also equal to P in case of the perfect competitive market structure. So, if it is MR is equal to MC, we can also reframe that as a MC is equal to P because MR and P is equal in case of a perfect competitive market structure. So, for profit maximization, for profit maximization, uh, we know that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and which is also equal to P. So, now what is uh, marginal cost? marginal cost is minus 2 plus 8 q that is uh, maybe uh, how we get this m c we get this m c by taking the uh, derivative of the total cost with respect to q. So, minus 2 plus 8 q. Now, this minus 2 plus 8 q has to be equal to the price as price is equal to marginal cost. Now, to solve it for q, it will come 1 by 8 p plus 2. Now, we know that firm will produce till the time p is greater than equal to average variable cost or we can say average revenue is greater than equal to average variable cost as in case of perfect competitive market structure p is equal to average revenue. So, to find that uh, uh, this P is equal to average revenue, this is how we say that okay, if at any point of time if AR is greater than equal to ABC or P is greater than equal to ABC, firm will continue the production. Now, we will find the t total variable cost. Total variable cost is minus 2 Q plus 4 Q square and through this we can find out the average variable cost and average variable cost is minus 2 plus 4 Q. So, as we know that A B C is a linear function and uh, as it is a linear function, it has no minimum. So, the firm would produce the quantity which is Q is equal to 1 by 8 that is P plus 2. So, that is equal to if you simplify this again 1.8 P is equal to 10 as you have decided the equilibrium price that is 10 plus 2. So, this comes to as a 1.5 units. Okay. So, Q is 1.5 units. Now, what is total revenue? Total revenue is uh, P multiplied by Q. So, P multiplied by is P is equal to 10, Q is multiplied by Q is 1.5. So, 10 multiplied by 1.5 it comes to 15. So, Q is equal to 1.5 T uh, total revenue is equal to 15. Similarly, what is the total cost? Total cost we have to put the value of Q in the total cost and there we get the total cost is equal to 31. Now, what is the profit here? Profit should be ideally total revenue minus total cost and total revenue minus total cost if it comes total revenue is 15 and total cost is 31 which is minus 16. So, this cannot be called as profit rather this is loss. So, in this case in this cost function uh, if they are operating at a profit maximizing level that is P is equal to M C they are they are not getting the profit rather rather than that they are incurring loss. So, now we know that the loss is equal to minus 16 or maybe we can say loss is equal to 16. Now, what is our fixed cost? So, if you remember your uh, if you remember your uh, uh, cost function, cost function is 25 minus uh, 2 q 
plus 4 q square. So, here this part is average variable cost, this part is this part is variable cost and this part is fixed cost. So, whatever the loss that is less than the fixed cost that is equal to 16. So, the firm what will the uh, what is the thumb rule or what is the decision for the firm now? Firm would produce 1.5 unit and incur a loss of 16. But the natural question comes here that why they should uh, why the firm should produce if, if when they are getting a loss of 16 rupees. Because if you remember the shutdown condition what we discuss till the time they are covering the variable cost they should produce because it is still profitable for them that they are not incurring fixed cost by shutting down the operation point 1. Point 2 is here if you look at the fixed cost is more than the loss. So, if they are incurring it, if they are producing at least they are paying less or they are incurring less loss, but if you are the shutting down they have to pay 25 rupees which is equal to the fixed cost. And uh, point 2 is that since this is a short run uh, situation, the possibility is that even if they are incurring loss now, at least uh, if they are continuing the production, if they are continuing the operation, at least the, when it uh, goes to the long run scenario, at least they will incur a normal profit or they will incur a super normal profit. And short run since the time period is short, always the producer would like to uh, continue the production even if they are incurring the loss with the aspiration with the hope that they are going to at least get the profit at least in the long run. So, now next we will uh, move to the long run equilibrium and how the short run is different from long run because long run is the situation where all the inputs are variable and the output can be increased by changing all the inputs. There is no fixed cost in the long run. So, in the long run the perfect competitive firm only on the normal profit there is no case of loss there is no case of super normal profit all the firms they are normal profit in case of a perfect competitive firm. This is due to unrestricted entry into and exit of firms up from the industry in the long run. So, if you remember one of the characteristic what we uh, discuss in the case of characteristic of perfect uh, competitive economy is the free entry and free exit. And this is the main uh, source of uh, source of this is the main point that why the perfect competitive firm just unlock the normal profit. Two extreme possibility generally it may happen. We can discuss two extreme possibility and then from there we can uh, lead to the fact that why the firm only they earn the normal profit in the case of the long run. So, one firms earning super normal profit and second firms incur losses in the short run. If in the first case the firm is earning super normal profit in the long, long run. Taking this as a situation let us see how generally the firms uh, end in a situation where, uh, uh, where they just get the normal profit. Assuming that if some of the firm they are just earning the super normal profit in the short run. Now, what is the what will the uh, outcome or what will be the consequence? Super normal profit some of the existing firms they are making profit in the super normal profit in the market. There is free entry. So, that will that will be the incentive for the few more firms to go and operate in the market because it is profitable market and some of uh, few of the firms they are getting profit over here. New firms enter into the market there is no restriction on entry supply increases because they also go and produce the same product because this is the market where the uniform product or the identical product gets produced. With the entry of new firm supply is of the market increases, we are assuming there is no change in the demand because when the firms get profit that may not profitable for the buyers. So, if buyers if it is not profitable may be they are not demanding more in the market. Existing firm on super normal profit which attracts the new firms to enter into the market, new firm enter into the market, no change in the demand, supply increases this lower the market prices because supply is more and demand is less. The process of adjustment continue 
till the time price equal to the long run average cost that is average revenue is equal to average cost which is again equal to the marginal revenue and marginal cost. So, in this case it is a case of the normal profit where average revenue is equal to the average cost. So, the entry of new firm will continue to come till the time at least all the firms they are not getting the normal profit in the market. So, if you look at the supernormal profit of the existing firm are squeezed until all the firms in the industry earn the normal profit. Then we will take the second situation where some of the firm or may be existing firm, some of the existing firms they are getting or they are incurring loss. Now, what would be the outcome since this is long run and they are all they are already incurring loss from the short run onwards. This would force few of the producer or few of the uh, sellers to leave the industry in the long run because they are not they may not able to sustain loss for the long period of time. Their exit from the industry cause a reduction in the supply of the product and as a result equilibrium price in the industry increases. So, now there is a decrease in the supply demand remain constant the uh, there is a increase in the equilibrium price of the industry. The process of adjustment again continue to the point where the marginal firm no longer earn losses or we can say till the time price line is tangent to the average cost. So, the process of adjust adjustment continue to the point where the managerial firm the where the marginal firm no longer earn losses and till the price the till the time till the price line tangent to the average cost and if the price line is tangent to the average cost that is how we get the normal profit. Equilibrium occurs at a point where price is tangent to the long run average cost and all the firms make normal profit in the long run. So, equilibrium occurs at a point where price is tangent to the long run average cost curve and all the firms they just earn the normal profit. So, whether you take the case of supernormal profit, whether you take the case of the supernormal loss, this is not going to continue in the long run at least in the perfect competitive market structure which has a significant feature as free entry and free exit and because of that at the end of the day if you will find all perfectly competitive firm they are just getting the normal profit even if they are getting a super normal profit or the uh, incurring loss generally that in a uh, in a time period uh, generally they again come back to a situation where all the firms they are just getting the normal profit. So, the condition from the profit maximizing behavior of the firm from the long run emerges from here that is P is equal to marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue which is equal to the long run average cost curve. So, we will just see the graphical representation that how graphically we can reach to a long run equilibrium. This is P which is also equal to average revenue and marginal revenue here we take the quantity where we take the average revenue marginal revenue and price and this is the long run average cost curve this is the short run average cost curve this is the short run marginal cost curve and this is the equilibrium point and this is the equilibrium level of output. So, what is the profit maximizing condition in case of long run? That is long run average cost curve is equal to the short run average cost curve, equal to the short run marginal cost curve, equal to the marginal um, mar equal to the marginal revenue and equal to the average revenue. So, the equality of long run average cost curve, short run average cost curve, short run marginal cost curve, marginal revenue and average revenue that leads to the long run equilibrium, long run profit maximization. Then we will see the uh, supply curve in case of the uh, long run market supply and long run individual firm supply in case of three different type of industry that is constant cost industry, increasing cost industry and decreasing cost industry. So, if you remember the in case of short run, the market supply is uh, su horizontal summation of the individual firm supply curve and how we get the individual firm supply curve? Individual firm supply curve is that segment of the um, marginal cost curve which lies above the average variable cost. 
but that is that cannot be done in case of the long run because in the long run at least we are not uh, checking the shutdown condition it is actually exit from the market. So, in the long run we will see that whenever there is a changes in the price, whenever there is a changes in the factor of production, it is not only due to change in the price, also due to the change in the factor of production, the increase or decrease in the prices of the factor that also lead to the change in the supply. So, that we will analyze through the uh, three different uh, industry that is constant cost industry, increasing cost industry and decreasing cost industry. To start with, we will first analyze the constant cost industry. Constant cost industry is an industry in which cost of production remain constant as output in the industry expand. Means, the scale of output is increasing at the constant cost of production, there is no increased cost of production. Now, we know that whenever there is a supernormal profit, new firms enter into the market. What will happen to the supply of the product as new firms enter into the industry? Obviously, supply will increase because new firm they have entered into the industry. What happens to the price of the product? Price is decreases because given the demand, then supply is more and demand is constant, supply has increased. So, now supply is more than demand and that leads to decrease in the price. So, price goes back to where it was before the demand change, but there is no more output being produced by more firm. So, if so the price goes back where it was before the demand changes, but there is no more output is being produced by more firm because they know that if they are increasing the supply that leads to decrease in the market price and it is no more profitable for the existing firm at least. Note that if price did not drop enough there would be still the positive economic profit and firm would continue to enter the industry. So, if price is not decreasing significantly, still there will be some amount of the economic profit and which will again act as an incentive for the firm to enter into the industry. The firm should continue to enter in the industry, supply would keep increasing and the price would drop some more, because since there is a new firm still entering, still supply will increase and price will again decrease more. The second one is, if the price drop too much, it would not cover cost per unit, there would be losses. So, at least they are not getting only the uh, super normal profit, also they are not getting the normal profit, rather they are incurring loss. Firm would leave the industry, supply would fall and the price would come back just covering the cost of, uh, price would come back of just covering cost per unit. So, either if it is just dropping a bit, Again, new firm will continue to come because still there is some amount of profit. If it is drops too much, the existing firm they incur loss and when they are not covering up their cost per unit, they prefer to exit the market which will reduce the supply and the price would come back off just covering the cost per unit. So, what has happened as a result of increase in the demand in the cost and cost industry? We now have the same price we had before, but if, but we now have more output because you have more farms in the industry. So, in a constant cost industry, farm will produce as much or as little as the economic demands at a price which is just enough to cover the cost per unit. They will not produce more than that because it is a constant cost industry. Farm will produce only whatever is the requirement on the basis of the demand at a price which is just enough to cover the cost per unit. It means, the long run supply curve in a constant cost industry is horizontal, because price is fixed and the supply they increase on the basis of the demand. Whenever there is an increase in the demand, they just uh, cover up that at the typical price. Now, we will see what is the, gra how is the graphical representation of the long run supply curve in case of constant cost industry. So, this is our demand curve, this is the demand curve, this is S 1, 
this is s0 so this is t0 this is s0 so this is our t0 and at the same price we will continue to supply more so that is why this is our long run supply curve and this is the this is the price that is P1 this is one equilibrium point this is another equilibrium point so the long run supply curve is constant because they are not producing more they are just increasing the supply just on the basis of the demand that is comes from the consumer so this is the long run supply curve in case of cost and cost industry which is just a straight line and it is parallel to the x axis then we will uh, take this case in case of the uh, increasing cost industry and decreasing cost industry now what is a increasing cost industry increasing cost industry is when they increase the scale of output the cost of production also increases so in case of uh, in case of uh, increasing cost industry factor prices rise as the new firms enter into the market and existing firm expand the capacity because uh, new firms enter into the market they require input they require factors and also the existing firm they enter they, they expand their capacity they also need the factor and as well since the demand is increasing the factor price also increasing given the supply at that same level so if the inputs are specialized factor prices are likely to rise when the increase in the industry wide demand for inputs to products increases so demand remain uh, if you look at if demand is uh, the new firms enter into the market existing firm expand the expand the production capacity that leads to increase in the industry wide demand for inputs and if the inputs are specialized again the factor prices are likely to increase the rise in the factor cost or the increase in the factor cost would force the cost for each firm in the industry and uh, uh, increase the price at which firms earn the zero profit. So, when there is a increase in the factor cost that also lead to increase in the cost uh, of the each firm because now they are spending more on the incurring the uh, incurring the expenses of the factors and the inputs and increase the price because if input cost is more obviously the market price has to be more because that is uh, if the price is not covering the input cost the uh, the firm will prefer to leave the market if they are not getting the profit since it is a long run at least they should get the normal profit. So, increase in the factor price uh, would force the cost of the firms to increasing and also the increase in the price because at least they feel that the unit cost should at least earn which the firms earn zero profit. Therefore, in case of increasing cost industry, the long run supply curve is upward sloping because increase in the new firms enter into the market, existing firm expand the size, demand for input increases and sometimes there is also special demand for specialized input that leads to increase in the cost of production for the firms that leads to increase in the market price and that is the reason in case of uh, in case of increasing cost industry we get a upward sloping supply curve and that will check graphically that how we get a upward sloping curve in case of increasing cost industry so this is uh, increasing cost industry we are finding out the long run supply curve So, we have D0, we have D1, then we have S0 and then we have S1. Okay. So, this is E0, this is E1 and Corresponding to this, we have P0, we have 
P1 and if you join this 2.02 to E1, we get a long run supply curve. So, it is upward sloping, sloping in case of increasing cost industry. And why it is upward sloping? Because the factor price increases which leads to the increase in the mar which leads to the increase in the cost of production for the firm and also which leads to the increase in the market price uh, market price and that force the uh, in fact that force the uh, farms to charge a higher price because they have to at least cover up the unit cost what they are uh, what they are incurring to produce the product now we'll check the uh, decreasing cost industry so in case of decreasing cost industry if input price declines when the industry output expand, individual firms marginal cost curve shift down and the long run supply curve is downward sloping. So, since in case of decreasing cost industry, when the scale of operation increases, it increases with a decreasing cost of production. So, that has to give a reason that if because of the decrease, decrease in the input price. So, if input price declines when the industry output expands, individual firms marginal cost curve shift down because the per unit cost decreases and the long run supply curve is downward sloping. So, it is a case of decreasing cost industry where the scale of operation increases, cost of production decreases because of less input price which leads to decrease in the marginal cost, marginal cost shift downs and that lead to decrease in the long run supply curve in case of a perfectly competitive market structure typically in case of decreasing cost industry. So, input price may decline to the zero profit condition when output increases and when new entrants make it more cost effective of for other firms to provide services to all firms in the market. So, input price may decline to the zero profit condition when output increases and when new entrants make it more cost effective for the other firms so, uh, services for the all firms in the market. So, we will see the graphical representation of the decreasing cost industry. So, this is long run supply in case of decreasing cost industry D 0, then we have D 1 S 0, we have S 1. So, we have E 0, we have E 1. So, this is the first equilibrium, this is the second equilibrium and if you do this, then this is our long run supply curve, because this is a decreasing cost industry, expansion is at a decreasing cost per unit and that is the reason we get a uh, downward sloping long run supply curve in case of the decreasing cost industry. So, in case of cost and cost industry, the long run supply curve is a straight line horizontal in case of increasing cost industry, the long run supply curve is upward sloping because the cost of production increases when our in when the scale of operations expand or when new firms enter into the market. And in case of uh, decreasing cost industry, the long run supply curve is downward sloping uh, because the cost of production decreases when the firm or maybe the scale of operation increases at a decreasing cost per unit of production. Then we will see that uh, what is the effect of tax or how uh, how the consumer, how the buyers and sellers they bone the tax, imposition of the tax or the bone the burden of the tax in case of a perfect competitive market structure. So, we will talk about uh, typically three type of tax, one imposition of a lump sum tax, second imposition of a profit tax and finally, the imposition of a specific sales tax. So, if you look at the lump sum tax, it is the, the effect of lump sum tax is like a effect of the fixed cost because it is on the it is it the effect is on the fixed cost. And if you look at the in the short run, uh, if there is a change in the fixed cost, it is not going to change the 
it is not going to change the equilibrium position because till the time it is not affecting the marginal cost, it is not going to change the equilibrium position. And in case of similarly, in case of profit tax, again it is a the uh, effect is like a fixed cost, uh, but in the long run the possibility is that that supply will uh, shift, but in case of specific sell tax, the imposition of tax is dealt through the elasticity of supply and that uh, talks about that how much is the uh, sensitivity of the supplier with respect to change in the price. So, we will start our um, uh, start our explanation for the imposition of the tax from the lump sum tax and lump sum tax is like it is one time uh, lump sum. So, it is the, the effect is like a fixed uh, uh, cost at least in the short term there is no, eff, uh, no effect, but uh, at when it comes to long run may be there is some, uh, some effect because there may be decrease in the output. Okay. So, this is the uh, average revenue that is marginal revenue, here we get the short run total cost curve and this is the average fixed cost. Then there is an increase in the average fixed cost after the imposition of the tax that is why this is average fixed cost or change in that average fixed cost. And with the change in the average fixed cost, the short term average cost curve is increasing that is SETC 1 and marginal cost generally intersect the average variable cost and average cost at its minimum. So, if you look at in case of lump sum tax, only there is an increase in the fixed cost and that shift the average total cost curve, there, there is a change in the average uh, total cost curve, otherwise there is no much effect at least in the short run, but in the long run at least to the, the some level of output it is going to influence. But uh, if you look at if it is uh, short run, someone is just earning the normal profit, then in the long run he has to incur loss because of the lump sum tax. But in the short run, if someone is getting super normal profit, at least after imposition of tax, he will get only only the normal profit or there is some reduction in the amount of profit, but at least he is not incurring loss. So, in this situation at least they are getting affected through the lump sum tax because they are moving from one possibility to another possibility that is either from super normal profit to normal profit or from normal profit to loss. Then we will take the um, effect of the uh, profit tax. So, profit tax is also somehow in the same category that this is the, um, the effect of like a change in the fixed cost, but sometimes due to this the supply changes at least in the long run and it has it leads to increase in the price. So, this is the demand curve, this is the supply curve, this is the equilibrium quantity, this is the equilibrium price. Uh, so, at least in the short run it is not much of change, but it, when it takes to the long run it is generally shift the supply to the op and that leads to increase in the price and decrease in the quantity demanded. So, the effect of the profit tax if you will see if it is more much felt in the long run rather than the short run, because short run it has nothing more to do or the effect is not much, but in case of a uh, long run that leads to decrease in the supply, because there is a imposition of profit tax that leads to uh, decrease in the, that leads to increase in the supply which leads to increase in the price and decrease in the quantity. Uh, demanded and what is the specific effect of on farm because of this profit tax again the same explanation if they are earning super normal profit in the short run at least it is not much because they will just there will be some reduction in the profit but if they are just getting the normal profit the possibility that they may land into uh, incurring loss at least in the long run with the imposition of the profit tax now we'll analyze the uh, case of uh, specific sales tax and this uh, effect of the specific cell tax is more on uh, what is the elasticity of supply. 
if the elasticity of supply is more generally the firms pay less for the tax and if it is less then the firm has to pay more for the tax so it's all about the elasticity of supply curve that decides that what is the effect of uh, specific sales tax on buyers and what is the effect of specific sales tax on the uh, seller so if you will take different scenario and will see how the uh, imposition of specific sales tax affecting the buyers and seller so if you take a regular demand curve and the supply curve then this is the demand curve this is the supply curve and when there is a imposition of tax that is shown through the change in the supply so in this case this is the this is the uh, tax and this is the uh, change in the price after imposition of tax so if you look at here the uh, entire tax amount is not passed to the consumer entire tax amount is not passed to the consumer in the form of increase in the price still this much amount is paid by the seller so if you look at here the imposition of the specific sell tax is uh, equally on both the side buyers and seller if it is a case of the regular demand and supply curve now suppose we'll take another example where the supply curve is uh, elastic than the uh, previous case and here if you look at this is the amount of the tax and this is the change in the price so in this case in the if you make it a comparison between the first case and the second case if the supply since the supply curve is more elastic the major part of the burden of the tax is passed to the consumer in the form of increase in the price but in case of the first case if you look at equally both the supply seller and buyer they were paying the tax amount but here the supply curve is elastic so there is some leverage in the uh, seller side to pass the burden of tax to the consumer in term of increase in the price and that's why here it is more as compared to this because the change in the price is more in case of the second case and by through change in the price generally the tax is passed to the uh, passed to the consumer or maybe majority portion of the tax is passed to the consumer then we'll take a case where the supply curve is perfectly elastic okay and this is the demand curve here we can take the maybe demand and supply and here the price so in this case if you look at this is the tax amount and the entire tax is passed to the consumer in the form of increase in the price because here the supply curve is perfectly elastic any small change in the price will lead to greater change in the Uh, uh, supply and that is the reason. If you look at the entire entire supply, entire uh, tax is entire uh, tax burden is passed to the consumer. So more elastic is the market supply. Higher is the proportion of specific tax that can be passed to the consumer. So more elastic is the supply. Higher the burden to the consumer. so in case of uh, lump sum tax and fixed tax uh, in case of uh, lump sum tax and uh, profit tax the effect is like a fixed cost of production and uh, if you look at uh, it's not getting uh, much of effect in case of short but short, short run but in case of long run the possibility is that they may incur loss if they are just getting the normal profit and in case of specific sales tax it's always the um, uh, elasticity of supply that decides that how what is the effect of uh, what is the effect of this imposition of tax on the sellers if supply is more elastic burden is less if supply is less elastic the burden is more then we'll uh, look at some of this efficiency criterion in perfectly competitive market so if you remember in the initial class we talked about the allocative efficiency and 
productive efficiency. So, we will check in the first case what is the resource allocative efficiency in case of a perfectly competitive market. Any firm they produces, they produce at the marginal revenue which is equal to the marginal cost and since marginal revenue is equal to P for competitive firm then P is also equal to marginal cost. Now, what is the meaning? Meaning here is the marginal benefit that is through demand and marginal cost that is supplier using the society resources. So, society marginal value of resources is equal to the opportunity cost of using resources and that is how we use the allocative efficiency or that is how the allocative efficiency gets satisfied in case of a perfectly competitive market. And when you again explain this through the consumer surplus and producer surplus, if you look at the uh, graph over here, the consumer surplus is, uh, if you remember the uh, at least the definition, the consumer surplus is one where any price above the market price, if the consumer is ready to pay more and if they are paying less, generally they get some amount of the consumer surplus. So, consumer surplus area in specific graph, if you look at ABPP is the consumer surplus area, uh, because that is the above the market price and uh, suppl uh, supplier surplus is that is CBPE. So, that is again C, P e and B and competitive equilibrium maximize the market surplus. Now, the question is what about Q 1, what is the, what about the level of output? So, the second case is productive efficiency, here the firms produces at the minimum of average total cost in the long run and a firm economizing, economizing on resource use and if not competing firm would undercut its price and capture the extra profit. So, since they are economic on the economizing on the resource use that is again satisfies the productive efficiency. Then we will see what is the application of perfect competitive market in the real world and we will take the typical example of stock market as I said the stock market, share market somehow uh, share at least some of the feature of the perfect competitive market. So, if you are taking the example of stock market whether this is a perfect competitive market in the real world, let us analyze what are the similarity and what are the dissimilarity. The price of stock usually determined by the market forces of demand and supply of stock which goes with the perfect competitive market structure. Individual buyers and sellers have very little impact on price as they are the price taker. Again the same situation what we generally face in case of a perfect competitive market structure. Perfect uh, mobility of resources and here also the resources are mobile as stock is bought and sold frequently and information about the price and quantity are readily available. So, there is full information and perfect information to all the uh, people those who are in the stock market buyers and seller. So, price decided by the market demand and market supply first feature, individual buyer seller has less impact second feature, perfect mobility of the resources third feature and full information about the product price fourth feature. All these four features get matched or it comes from the characteristic of a perfect competitive market structure. Now, we need to see that whether there is imperfection, but before that we we'll see that whether like in before a couple of minutes we are talking about the efficiency of the or whether the productive efficiency and allocative efficiency get satisfied in the perfect competitive market structure or not. So, to take that as a cue and similar the same thing happens in case of a stock market that fund flows into the stock and the resources flow into the huge and in which the rate of return. So, stock price provide a signal, significant, uh, signal for the efficient allocation of investment in the economy. So, till the time all these features are matching with the perfect competitive market structure, but still there are some imperfection and that is why we cannot say that there in a rigid form there are the perfect competitive market structure, but somehow there is a close resemblance of this type of market structure with the perfect competitive market structure. Now, what are the Im what is the imperfection over here? Imperfection occurs here also though stock market is very close to perfect competition. For example, sale of huge amount of stock by a large corporation will affect the price of stock which goes against the characteristic of perfect competitive market structure that one seller or one buyer cannot influence the price of the product. So, to summarize we can say that uh, perfect competitive market, stock market closely come to the perfect competitive market, but still it is there are some imperfection 
occurs. So, in the next class again we will take uh, one more example like whether credit card industry uh, comes in the category of perfect competitive market structure or not and then we will start our discussion on the monopoly. So, to summarize whatever we discussed today is we talked about the market supply in the short run which is the uh, segment, um, segment of MC which lies above the average variable cost. We talk about the long run equilibrium, we discuss about the long run supply curve in case of increasing cost industry, constant cost industry, decreasing cost industry and we talked about the imposition of tax and we talk about the allocative efficiency and productive efficiency whether that is getting satisfied in case of a perfect competitive market structure or not. So, we will carry forward our discussion of a perfect competitive market structure, application to real world and monopoly in the next session.